There we go. <laughs> uh, good, well, almost afternoon, everybody. Uh, Dominique here from Body and Mind Yoga. Um, if you're tuning in once again, um, we've had some technical difficulties over the course of yesterday, and we are trying again. And by we, I mean me, I guess. <laughs> so the topic of mom butt has been on my mind a little bit lately. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had my six-week appointment with my pelvic floor physiotherapist, and among other things, the topic of, I think you're at risk of having mom butt, or I guess it wasn't I think, you are at risk of having mom butt, came up in conversation. It was said exactly like that um, by my pelvic floor physiotherapist, Angela Grouse. Um, if you want to see her, please feel free to get in touch with me, and I'll pass over her contact information. Um, very tongue-in-cheek, and I, I take things as they are. <laughs> I kind of laugh about it. It is one thing to notice it about yourself, but an entirely different thing when somebody else tells you you have it. So I've really been focusing on trying to um, avoid this from being the case for the rest of my life because, you know, I love being a mom. I don't necessarily like to look like I'm a mom in my rear end. So let's talk about what is it. So pretty typically, so I've got my pelvis here to show you what's going on internally. So we've got our pelvis here, so that's the front of the pelvis, and the side of the pelvis is probably where we're going to see it more. So what happens internally is you end up with an anterior, an anterior pelvic tilt. Wow, if I could speak this morning that would be fantastic. So the tail, the tailbone tucks under, so we've got the tailbone back here, it starts to roll under, the hips come forward, the pelvic bone comes forward in the front here, and then we've got the top of the hips rocking back. So that's what's happening internally. So everything's just a little bit out of alignment, which is not fun. Um, so when this happens, it all really begins in pregnancy. As your belly grows, your center of gravity shifts and your body's trying to compensate from that shift in the gravity. So you start to kind of tilt your hips forward and you start to squeeze your bum so it really flattens out the backside. In turn, tucking the tailbone under and existing with a straight spine feels very difficult to do, so the shoulders start to round forward as well. For me personally, during pregnancy, I felt a lot of pulling in my belly, and I feel like I was almost doing this movement to kind of pull the belly in to avoid it from getting that feeling like it's pulling forward and creating that pain down the center or even along the bottom of my, of my belly. So it all begins in pregnancy. Then here comes your tiny human being into the world. And what happens then is you are hunched over, you are nursing, bottle feeding, carrying baby. I know for me personally, I have this, I don't know, it must be like a protection thing where I'm holding my baby in and I feel like she needs to touch every part of my body the whole time. So as part of my exercises, I've been trying my best to stand up a little taller, lift through the chest, and then the first few times I did this, I was really thrown off by the fact that her legs weren't touching me at all. So it is going to be a different feeling, especially if this is, um, you've had your newborn for a while, or your baby, I guess they might not be a newborn, or if you're on your second, third, etc. child, it's going to feel like a very different position. So when we're holding the baby close and we're trying to make them touch our entire body, again, we're hunched over through the shoulders. And if you think about it, if you hunched over your shoulders and tried to tilt your tailbone back, it feels really awkward in the body. So the pelvis tends to do that forward rocking position like I showed you before. So forward rocking to kind of, I don't know, protect your baby or just making sure that, um, you know, maybe you feel a, a bit more sturdy like that. I'm not exactly sure why we do it, to be honest. It's just probably the more comfortable way to do it. So beginning of pregnancy, and then it's emphasized once the tiny human makes its appearance in the world. Fact of the matter is, our population has weak glutes, period. So the glutes are one of the biggest muscles in the body. And just because of the way we exist in today's society, they tend to be very underused. And it is possible to cheat in things like squats, deadlifts, lunges, and not actually activate through the glutes. So by creating exercises and situations where you need to fire up your glutes in order to complete a task, then you can start to get stronger and feel those effects in your body. So what does strong glutes do for you? It stabilizes the pelvis. So any kind of pelvic pain you may have experienced during pregnancy can be helped by strengthening through the glutes. I do have a video both on the Facebook page and on my Instagram about a way that I was dealing with my pelvic pain when yoga failed me. I turned to strength training and it stopped coming back. So 
Um, for me personally, that worked, but I always recommend that you that you go see a pelvic floor physiotherapist to make sure that um, just that you know what's going on internally, and then you can take things from there. It also helps you balance. Also a great thing. It also helps prevent pelvic floor dysfunction. So I'm always coming back to pelvic health, it seems, no matter what I'm talking about. And again, pelvic floor dysfunction can lead to pain, incontinence, as well as various other um, issues. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's too weak. During pregnancy, my pelvic floor was actually too tight. It was like my body remembered what we went through one time and it was desperately trying to hold this baby in. From the end of the first trimester, I was experiencing um, pelvic or um, pain, um, especially in my pubis symphysis, which is um, this little cartilage right here in the middle. It tends to loosen up throughout pregnancy anyways to kind of create space for the baby to make its exit end of first trimester. Some people don't experience it towards the end, but um, I dealt with it, at least with my second pregnancy, um, for a lot longer. And even the first pregnancy as well, um, it seemed to be earlier than, than I've heard most people start to deal with it. So what can we do? And what does it look like on the outside? So this is the part where I lost audio yesterday. So hopefully so here I took a very uh, picture of myself to kind of show the external version and I may be over exaggerating a little bit um, but I tried my best to show what my posture looks like when I'm not thinking about it. So you'll notice that um, my bum is clenched, it looks pretty flat. You'll also notice in my lower back it's pretty straight so I've lost my lumbar curve. So the lower back curve that is the natural way that the spine is supposed to be placed is virtually flat. There should be a little curve there. And then you can see that my back is slightly rounded, shoulders are rounding forward, and if you pay attention to, you'll see that my neck is actually coming forward a little bit. And um, as you can see by the look on my face, I'm very upset about this, um, this mom butt situation. So what should it look like? So it'll finish its little pan here. I don't know why it does that. Um, it did it when I put the video together and I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. Um, so first picture, now you have it on the left. On the right, I've tried to correct my posture for the purpose of showing you. Ideally, I should have probably done an after picture down the line once things are actually fixed, but instead I tried to um, just fix my posture, which actually felt very uncomfortable. Um, another thing that happens when we're in that first left position is the back muscles become overstretched and the front muscles become very tight. So tight through the abdominals, tight through the chest. Not tight in the way that we want it. Um, tight because of stress, tightness because I'm holding my body like that and it's shortening the muscle and shortening the fascial tissue. So one of the things that we can do to kind of fix it um, is, is opening up through the front of the body. You'll notice in the picture, I have a little bit more of a butt back, which is very nice. My upper back is straighter. My shoulders have this tendency to curl forward naturally a little bit, so there is still a little bit of that. Um, it would take many, many, many years to fix um, over 30 years worth of doing that. My neck is a little straighter, and I've got that natural curve back in my lower back. Now, I might be hyperextending a little bit, um, just because, again, I haven't done this because of work that I've done. I was just trying to um, fix the situation. So, And then I made sure to smile so you can see where you're supposed to be versus where you're not supposed to be. Um, so moving on, things that we can fix. So the first thing I mentioned is opening up through the body. So first thing you can do, and I've taken this right out of um, my restorative yoga practices, this first image here is a great option if you are pregnant. Um, and it's just a chest opener, opens up the front of the body, and it takes the back into almost an extreme reversal of what we're doing. So hopefully that curved spine versus the overextended spine will bring you back to the middle, and it'll be perfect and dandy. I've also supported my knees and my ankles um, with props, so that way I can hold this for an extended period of time. There are times where I'll spend 20 minutes in this position, sometimes even a little bit more because, um, yeah, it feels good. <laughs> it feels really good. And this is something that you can do every day. Um, and you can't hold it for extended periods of time. As long as you're comfortable, there should be nothing painful about this whatsoever. So, um, propping up your body is also great for when you're first starting out. Um, the version I really like to do, especially now that I'm not pregnant is to actually have the bolster straight on the ground. And as you can see, it really takes 
my spine into even more of an extension and it feels really good. So this is one thing that I make sure that I practice almost on a daily basis. The second um, thing that you can do is strengthen through your upper back. So when the upper back is rounded forward, those muscles become weak. I've mentioned that they're overstretched and they also become very weak. So doing movements that strengthen your upper back, such as the one that's playing right now, this is um, a cable row. You can do this also with a resistance band, which are nice and cheap. You can get them um, locally, treadmill factory, um, sport check probably has some, um, or tubing that you can wrap around a pole in the house. And the thing I'd like to show you here is that if you notice, before I even bend my elbow, I retract through my shoulder blade. So I pull my shoulder blade in towards the spine before I bend the elbow. And this ensures that the work is going into my back and I'm not just moving my arms or bending my elbow just to get there. So staying tight through the belly, lifted through the chest, trying my best to keep my neck in neutral. So I'm developing strength with the proper posture is very ideal in this position. So all kinds of fun stuff happening here. Then the um, next portion to this is actually, I'm trying to skip forward. There we go. Oh, I'm smiling. Um, the next one is to strengthen your butt. So this one I can't take credit for. Um, my, my partner here at the studio, he um, showed me this earlier this week and I loved it. Um, so it's deadlift strength in your bum, but by adding the elastic around where your hips crease when you bend over and another elastic around your knees helps to activate the glute muscles before you even start working. So I'm pushing my knees out slightly, which activates my bum, and I'm also stepping forward so there's tension through the elastic that's wrapped around the pole. And then I'm performing my deadlift now with an initial activation of my glutes, and then I'm simply adding more strength. The only thing that I would fix about this, particularly looking at it now, is I would actually thrust my hips forward a little bit to make sure I get a really good squeeze through the glutes and uh, making sure that um, I'm getting that extra strength in there, that extra squeeze, so I'm really benefiting from, from the work in there. So, um, yeah, it all comes down to muscular imbalance. Again, backside stretched out, front side tight, not the way you want it. Um, round upper, round shoulders, butt squeezed and flat. Typically, we notice this the most in family pictures when, when us moms get to appear in them. And yeah, there's ways to fix it. A fourth portion that I won't show on video, but there will be a yoga for pelvic floor workshop coming up in April where we're really going to focus on this is myofascial release of the abdominals. So again, we develop tight abdominal wall and it's great to release it with, um, I use a 20 centimeter Pilates ball. I've used um, a Theracane. I've used a wooden spoon. <laughs> I've used lacrosse balls, all different ways to just apply pressure to a tightness, relax into it and feel it start to dissipate. But again, this is a lot for the video that's already quite long already. So if you're interested to find out more, please feel free to either comment below or get in touch with me. I would really like to um, make sure that you're on the right track to kind of getting rid of that situation. So as always, thank you so much for your patience. Um, yesterday was a little bit of a disaster twice. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, distraction free and hopefully it looks like the audio um, worked the entire way through. So yeah, keep in mind, this is not just about moms either. Moms are associated with mom butt, hence the name. But um, a lot of our population has issues with weakness in the glutes, and I really want to make sure that you're on track to getting the most out of your workout. So again, questions, comments, concerns, feedback, always never hesitate to comment below. I will get back to you. If it's something that you, you're not quite comfortable um, speaking about on a public forum, then never hesitate to send me a message. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Feel free to um, share this video, like it, comment on it. These are ways that it helps the video get out there to other people as well. And just thanks for your support. As always, I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon and I'll be back next week on Wednesday at some point during the day. I'm not scheduling things anymore. I'm going to see how it goes with two littles. It's hard to predict what's going to happen. But Wednesdays, I'm going to um, start putting out some little videos with tidbits for you to um, follow. And eventually these videos will end up on Instagram and on the Facebook page individually as well. 
So again, have yourselves a fantastic day. Um, and yeah, I'll see you soon. Have a good one. Oh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> bye. <laughs>